hello. Welcome to the Johnson and Drake's Migration Album Release Show. Thanks for joining us. I'm Krista Wax. I host MSP Sound, local music show on KFAI. We're just listening to a little Uncle Funky off the release. And so excited because, oh my gosh, we have Tom Johnson and Guy Drake here too. Hey! Yay! Yay! We're doing it, yeah. Guy! We're, doing, we're releasing this thing! We're actually releasing this we're album. actually doing this! 46 <laughs> years! <laughs> Excuse me, I get a little overclimped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so exciting. Congrats on the album. Yeah, Again, thank you. Like, thank you very much. Uh, of course, 46 years in the making now. I feel like there's quite the story behind this. Yeah, there is. There is. And I don't know who wants to tell it. You I know. know. I, I guess I'll, 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 I'll start. And I don't know if we did yeah, this. Yeah, you start, Tom. I'll do, I don't know if we did this in the last one um, because I'm going to go right to the attic. I'm going to, I'm going to, you, I'll end at the attic guy. Okay. Okay. So, so all right. Got, got, okay. This, uh, okay. When I was born, no, <laughs> no, we were, we, Guy and I obviously had worked together for ever, ever and ever and ever. And, and, uh, and we're, we're actually, okay. Here's the deal. I'm, I'm in Gainesville, Florida. And I get a, a text from my brother saying, there's a commercial of a song of yours. Uh, there's a song of yours being played in a commercial, a Samsung commercial. Um, in the playoffs, and I'm going. No, no, that's not really. He's probably some. some, some, some said, no, really, seriously. He's like, no, no, no. So I didn't think anything of it. And then about three hours later, I just checked on my iPad. I looked and I was like, oh my god. I, I, I think I did tell a story last time, but um, it's like there is. This is this <laughs> song, and it's like yeah. it, it's our song. It's us playing it. It's exactly us, and we didn't know, and. And, and and nobody told us, and it's like, how can this happen? So, long story short, we we got a great lawyer. Uh, we did the whole deal, and and we're the, the lawyer had one comment though: if you could find the original contracts, that would be great. <laughs> so, Guy and Nan are live have lived in the same house for about thirty five years. I've certainly not, so it's, I'm not going to have the contracts. Guy's our best bet. Guy, take it. Yeah, Nan's uh, rummaging around in the attic, and I'm looking up through the ceiling, and she knocks over a box, and this envelope falls down and lands at my feet, and it says, Guy Drake, publishing contract. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. It's Literally. Like, it, would, it was in a movie. It would just be so corny. You'd go, you are like, a reverend, wow. though. You are a yeah, reverend. Yeah. That, that is true. This so is true. I'm so, get, yeah. I get used to that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so anyway... Um, but what we did find up there, we found a whole, we found boxes yeah. of Johnson and Drake stuff that we thought had been completely lost. And um, in there were the, uh, included in that was this album, the the tapes to this album called Migration. And we, we, had, uh, we had an album called Carry It On. We did a release party on that about three months ago. Some of you who are here tonight might have joined us at, at that event. And, and, um, we we had been out on the road for most of two years, yeah, like yeah. two two years, just promoting that album and you know just just touring and touring and touring. And, and we're doing and, concerts of our own, and we're also doing we're fronting everything from Earth, Wind, and Fire, Jim Croce, um, Linda Ronstadt, uh, I mean Lobo, I mean just like on and on and on the list of people. Anyway, I'm sorry. Right, and so we we. Um, uh, and we're writing songs along the way. And then we would come in off the road and grab a recording studio or wherever we could book it. And we would record these songs with the players that we were touring with right then, who were uh, Bill Berg on drums and, and Jimmy Johnson on Andy. bass. And um, slowly this coalesced into what Tom and I were really feeling like this was our our sequel to carry it on. We were really excited about it and then everything just sort of collapsed <laughs> it's not worth it, I, I don't know how to explain that <laughs> well it's become, partly because of well okay two two things i would say um we were touring with jim croce we we with the agency we were handled has beens and up and comings so Linda Ronstadt back then, if you can believe, was an up and coming. And this guy named Jim Croce was an up and coming. And we were touring with him a lot. And I mean a lot. 
And there was this one time when the plane that they were going to use couldn't hold the two of us. It could only hold one person. So they hired, instead of us being there, they hired the comedian. And we it's good because we had a photo shoot to go to anyway. So we're doing this photo shoot and this, and then this plane went down. Right. So yeah. we, we, that, that was a, that was a, um, we had a hard time recovering that our road manager was, was on that plane. Kenny Cortese was a very, very good friend of ours. And, and we had been traveling with him for, you know, months and months and months and months. And, and, uh, and that sort of like really fractured our record label and it fractured our booking agency and, Everybody was, uh, it, it, everything just sort of like fell apart. And the album just ended up going um, just on a shelf somewhere and, and it was forgotten. And we just walked away from it for, and, and, until we thought it was completely lost. And then, and, and, and we didn't hear it for like, for about four decades, right, Tom? That's right. <laughs> I mean, until, until it fell down after the, after the envelope. We yeah, thought, right. We, did, we thought this is lost, and right. it's not. It's here. We get to share it with you tonight. So that's so cool. The other, the other piece. I said there were two things. The other piece was that this album, the record company was like, eh, we're just not really. You're kind of touching on things that are a little bit um, iffy. You know, it's like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This isn't quite quite. We need some love songs, and could we could do something about you know? Um, this would be so great if you could. Uh, you know, kind of do love songs. That'd be great. That'd be great. And so, of course, we have one love song in there. It's about divorce, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know. No, no, like, no, no. Uh, great Beauty is, I think Great Beauty is my I favorite agree. love song that we I ever agree. wrote. And, 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 right. and this is the other piece of it. And I, I, I think Guy agrees, but I'm not sure. It's like, this is very special to us because to have found this album that was we thought was lost. And this was, this is my favorite of ours. This is my favorite. And, and, and so great beauty really is, is a, a love song to humanity and we'll get there. We'll get to great beauty, but, um, it's got a real before that, before that we need to, we have some other songs to get to. Dude, yeah. There's quite a few songs to get to. I just want to say thank you, Keith and Zoe tuning in. I love the yep. great stories. Yes. And Keith, Keith, hi Keith. <laughs> <laughs> hi Zoe. <laughs> Yes, you can use the chat box. And yeah, let's start listening to one of the songs from this 46 year. And I, I'm obsessed with that. Okay, yeah. I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to say some stuff. I'm sorry. But okay. um, this album is bookends. And that was also one of the things. We really we worked on this over a long period of time. But there was a thought behind it. And and uh, <laughs> so the, 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 the very beginning of this album, um, it actually starts with two, two little notes. And uh, and then goes into the song. Do you want to say anything about the song, guy? Or, or you can tell about later, too. Uh, yeah, Whatever. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. There, there's two songs that are kind of bookends that are so, somewhat similar, both in feeling and in the theme. And this first song, "Searching for Some Peace," is uh, Tom mentioned this thing about the record label looking at us crosswise. It's a a song that was really rooted in the whole women's movement that was really emerging then. And it's about, it's a whole song about discrimination against women, against long hairs, against old people. And, um, and, and it, 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 it was, we've, body. which we've turned into exactly. now. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's about us. See? So anyway, no, uh, the, uh, but the, they they just it, it, there was a social consciousness to the song that yeah. the record label just they just really yeah. couldn't figure it out at all. But when you listen to the words now, you sort of get the feeling like it was written today, not written in 1975. So that's that's the thing I would listen for is just you know kind of where the where the words are coming from. People who are are searching for some peace, they're just trying to be themselves. Yeah, I'm gonna. Guy is the lyricist in this group, and I'm I'm gonna call out his lyrics in this album a lot tonight um, because they're, in my opinion, spectacular. So, well, G whiz. Yeah, golly, <laughs> I got a twenty in the mail for you, Tom. Thanks. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, let's take a listen to this. Search sure. Peace off of migration. Oh, 
she will say Honey, I am tired complaining But I know you care And it seems unfair to me Every day It's a fight to be somebody In a girl's disguise No one recognizes me I'm searching for some peace But it's hard to find and I don't know why I have tension to release I'm a lesser person in some men's eyes So I'm treated as a piece Just a blonde haired girl who's always been shy I will say There, I feel I share with you every day. I strengthen my defenses because I feel on trial for the lifestyle I pursue. I'm searching for some peace, but it's hard to find, and I don't know why. I have tension to release. I'm a lesser person in some men's eyes So I'm fearing the police I'm a long-haired boy but known to get high Suddenly I'm reminded of my grandpa He said to me, never dare give up the Wow, that is a beautiful track. Searching for some peace off of migration. Thank you. Johnson and Drake. Thank a you. lot of great comments coming up. Everyone keep the comments coming. If you haven't, there is a comment box. So feel free to leave a little comment, say hello. And there's wow, some great wow. players on that uh, uh, with them, um, with uh, Bill Berg and Jimmy Johnson on, ba uh, on bass. There's also uh, Jeff Bouchier on guitar. And I noticed Jeff's here. And, uh, um, I did Bernie <laughs> and, uh, and you know, the other piece, of the, and I need to say this because the Mill City Quartet is playing there and there's a lot to this because when we found the tapes, it was really, a, they were demo, we, we, they were demos and, and we had a great, uh, you know, engineer, Paul, Paul Martinson, but, um, who did, you know, lots of, uh, uh Dylan stuff, but, uh, it was, it was it was really taking those and and we needed to finish them up. So this is this is the time when I think we bring in the third part of Johnson and Drake because this yeah. is really a triumvirate now, and it really is. And uh, and this this third person is um, Guy's son, oddly enough. And when you see him, you'll know <laughs> it's Guy's son. Uh, so there he is, Rusty Drake. Yay! Yay! So I mean, at this point, it's like Rusty. Rusty gets these tapes and it's like, oh, oh dear. 
<laughs> These are 45 years old. Um, Take know. it, Rusty. It's the real world start. <laughs> hey, Michael, how are you doing? Hey, everybody. I mean, I was thrilled to hear this music the first time. It, it, I instantly recognized that it was beautiful music with a, be, a compelling lyrics and amazing compositions. It was wonderful. It was so excited. It, was just that the songs weren't finished necessarily. There was things missing, like Tom was saying. And then also, of course, the tapes were 40, at this point it was 41 years old. They'd been sitting unlistened to for decades. Uh, they sounded tapes. good, uh, <laughs> but there was, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of issues with them. They were not ready for any sort of wide release. It just was not, would not have been possible really at that time. So, uh, I mean, I think that we, at the time, we all kind of started this project thinking, oh, well, let's just clean these up real quick yeah. there. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. No, no big, big deal. deal. <laughs> and <laughs> it's one of those things that the more you dig into it, that you know, the more it just opens up and unfolds and you realize how much there is to do. But it was really fun. I mean, every, every step of the way. I mean, first it was restoring the tapes, making them sound okay. Then it was figuring out, okay, well, what what's – what's really missing here? What is the, what do these tracks need? And then bringing people back in. And we brought Tom and Guy back into the studio in 2018, over 40 years after the first recording session, and laid down new vocal tracks. <laughs> they already had the lead vocal tracks, but we needed background vocals. And we're like, well, really needs them. That was a bizarre moment because um, <laughs> Guy and I really hadn't sung together for probably uh, we, uh, it's a long story but it'd been a, a while it had been a while time. and uh so we're you were there and you go okay can we can we're now we're gonna lay down some tracks and uh and you know and that's not like we needed to rehearse the song um but it was like we started singing and it was like oh my god we still have we we sound like us that was really cool yeah, we didn't think we'd sound like us. I mean, we're a yeah. totally different version of us. Yes. But it was just unmistakably those Johnson and Drake harmonies. I, I saw somebody wrote in the uh, in the chat that they liked the harmonies, and that's what everybody always loved about our music was, um, was that. And uh, it was so amazing to be able to still be able to do that all of these years later it's true and then and then like i, I know jeff bushier is here he joined us today jeff comes comes in you know again all of these years later and, yes. and for some reason his guitar parts that we had originally recorded all those years ago weren't on the version of the tape that we had so he re-recorded the guitars and we made some new parts and did all of that and then we brought in hull denials and Ruth Marshall from the uh, Mill City String Quartet and added in the strings. Tom wrote those beautiful string parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got some other songs that we're going to play that have some gorgeous strings too. But um, Hull, Hull Denials can really play the violin. <laughs> it's a great string quartet. It really and is. The real, awesome. there. If you've never heard the Mill City String Quartet, strongly recommend that Me too. you give those guys a listen yep <laughs> so anyway it was it was and then rusty um just led that whole reconstruction he masterminded the whole thing how we were going to do it thanks hey jeff <laughs> <laughs> we had a ton of fun having you there jeff absolutely I mean, that was amazing to get everybody back in the studio i mean for me knowing that jeff had played with johnson and drake you know back in the 70s and then we had him back in again recording brand new guitar parts it was so fun the whole thing yeah. was so cool and then with this idea of mixing it all together the whole goal was to uh, we're, we're, our goal was to make it as difficult as possible to tell when everything was recorded to make it all sound like it was just done at the exact same time so the idea was you know even though there was 40 years between recording sessions we wanted it to just have a really equal sound <laughs> and that's 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 a producer's job <laughs> and uh, and I always thought a Guy had a fantastic ear, but Rusty's ear is like primo. It's just <laughs> primo. And I'm serious. It's serious. It's like, as a producer, it's like just awesome. That's what you want. That's what a producer should do. And Rusty came back and said, you know what? I think we need to add, we need to do this. We need to do this. It's like, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's what we need to do. 
Yeah. yeah. It was so much fun seeing everybody again. You know, that was yes, just, it was. That was just a, a, a to, total blast. Yeah. And um, catching up on all the old days, and being on the road together and, you know, rock and roll in the 70s, which we had all shared back then. And um, um, so, yeah, it was it was just. It, it, the whole the whole experience was so much fun, and we've been working on it forever. I mean, Halder recorded that violin part. I think she and I figured it out the other day. I think it was twenty eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, that's, so, a, that's what are we now? Twenty twenty one. It's true, but it takes a while to get it out. I mean, we we've had um, we we have three albums out right now: Johnson and Drake, Carried On, and now this. And there's others to come in. And uh, before we even are done with this old stuff. And I know, I know Jeff's guitar work is like, in fact, <laughs> I, I, going on to this next song, I, I don't want to belittle this, but that, um, in the next song is called, it, it seemed to be, uh, Krista, are we taking over? <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, I mean, you're making my job easy here. I thought so. <laughs> you know, that's it. Like, good <laughs> Lord. Tell these guys to shut up. Oh, yeah, yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I mean, it, it, this is such a great story. And I just, um, Rusty, I mean, what were you thinking when they're like, here's this tape from the 70s? I mean, it was, I mean, Tom, you alluded to it. It was an actual tape from it. I mean, did, uh, could you find a machine that worked to play it? Yeah. Well, but, yes. It required finding business. Like, you know, we had to find a business that could do it. You know, we had to, you know, seek seek somebody out we ended up with saving tapes in minneapolis and they had all the right equipment they could digitize it for us i'm not sure if that's a word but i use it all the time um <laughs> it is i think, I think <laughs> what was i thinking what was i th i recall just being really excited that this music existed and i recall guy and tom instantly being really excited and then there was this uh and then i recall guy and tom being like let's release it and then I think I, I think it was me who had a moment of being like, wait, 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 hold on, guys. We could make this really good. I mean, this is really good stuff. This is like, you know, really nice lyrics. And uh, and uh, maybe I didn't quite realize how much I was biting off at the time. And um, we had some money from the from the from the Hello New Day Samsung commercial because we right. we won. I mean, we got that. So it was like, okay, yeah. Now we had we had we we ended up with a budget basically. So we thought, mm -hmm. well, let's let's do this right now and let's you know like let's. We basically just spent the money from that commercial on this <laughs> <laughs> and other things, but yeah, I think we need another song. So, so, so to this song, the, you're talking about That's Jeff's funny. guitar playing and and Rusty's production. This is a perfect example of of uh, of of this song called "Between You and Me," which is yet another song that the, the you know the record company went, "Are you kidding me? You're going to release this?" But um, it, it was <laughs> it, I love Jeff's guitar work on this, and I love the way that that Rusty. Um, really it integrated the, the guitar work on this song. And I also have to, I'm sorry, I'm just, just doing, I'm talking too much, but there's so many great lyrics in this. I, I got to read this because it's like, this is, this is it. Now that I'm gone, all the people will say he was cruel. He was gay. He was only a bum and the fights, they must have had some. How could they know the respect that we shared and the fact that we cared just enough to let go of a love approaching limbo? of a love I know I'm not quite over. I mean, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, between you and me. You and me. <laughs> People will say he was cruel, he was gay, he was only a bum, and the fights they must have had some. How could they know the respect that we shared and the fact that we cared just enough to let go of a love approaching limbo, of a love I know I'm not quite over. Explain what 
what was between you and me. It seems a fact in the nature that human, it's natural assuming the worst at a glance. But you can't account for romance. You and me. Cause we freely agreed it was time to let go Of a love approaching limbo Of a love we know was going nowhere Tell them all you love me But don't explain Keep in mind the good times Behind the pain But don't explain What was between beautiful track between you and me yeah like you're so progressive with your lyrics I just... <laughs> yeah i know the lyrics are like awesome yes. just awesome yeah, and you know it, it really uh jimmy johnson playing bass there with Bill Berg on drums but jimmy johnson was um well thanks jeff but uh that jimmy johnson is so weird because he would literally just in this particular song he just followed my left hand it was just like, I'll just always watch your left hand. Whatever you're doing with the left hand, that's what I'm going to do. It was like, I don't know, from a music standpoint, it was just like freaky. I was like, you can do that? Just like, <laughs> do that? You know, I didn't have to write out a part or anything. He's just like, yeah, I got it. And Jim, uh, to, to his benefit, Jimmy Johnson has been James Taylor's bass player for like two decades now. No, like four. Four decades. Four decades. He decade basically decades. went right from Johnson and Drake to James Taylor. <laughs> Isn't that called an upgrade? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know he still misses us, he says, you know. Yeah. <laughs> waiting yeah, for that. Call. Not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Wait. Wait, he's still waiting at the big time. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a very very nice um couple of documentaries out on YouTube of Jimmy and and him playing with Jimmy playing with James Taylor and how great they get along and how much of a trusted relationship that is. He was just a a brilliant guy. And he was laying down those bass parts for us when he was 17 years old. Yeah, 17. It's true. Yeah. It's well, also yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also reminded that the fact that uh, when so we, we're, we're, we're doing this, and uh, yes, Al, I know I saw him with Alan Holdsworth too, Jeff. I did. Right. I did. So anyway, um, but uh, – uh, back to the moving on. Um, the guy and I were, we were kind of plucked and I don't think we ever, I, I never, it's like, I would have loved to have been a Minneapolis act, but it was like, we never got a chance to play around Minneapolis. It was like, we just kind of got plucked and then we just, then they just they had an agency and we just played all these concerts with all these other people and, and all this kind of stuff. And so the agency is just like, you know, it's like, we're just, Okay, here, here's the story. Okay, is that we literally had them, <laughs> guy and I. Guy and I have been together for like since we're like 17 years old. Okay, and and we wrote a musical to Genesis Six. Actually, before that, I, I wrote a musical to Catch Catching the Rye. Guy played Ackley. We've been, you know, and then and then uh, and then Guy and I started writing songs together. And then we decided to do our first concert. I'm excited. Take and we did this breath. first. We did this first concert together, and. And this concert had about 104 people in it, and which is way too many. And then we um, couldn't do that first one, but we did the second week, and that had about 64 people. And it had a rock band, a choir, an orchestra, and um, and two grand pianos. Then we decided we better pare down. We decided to rent uh, a theater in Minneapolis called Theater in the Round. We did that for three nights. Had a recording stu studio come in and record it, and then. Um, 
after that, they said, you know, we'd like you to come into the recording studio and lay down a couple of tracks. So this small little band that we had, including Bernie, came in and um, we laid down a couple of tracks. And then they said, we'd like to do an album with you. And so it all happened kind of fast. <laughs> yeah, it was like, okay, uh, we don't want to have anything to do with the agency. We're, we'll get that and everything. So, um, yeah, so it was like, so right. there you are. And yeah. so now we were with this agency that handled has-beens and, and up-and-comings. And all of a sudden, we are on the road because that's what you do. You, you, if they put them on the road, they want you to get really good at your act and your your deal. And we we did. So this next song is really about that it's about sitting down with the manager and they're going you're you're the energy source i'm just the guide yeah so guide do you have anything you want to say about the source before so, we? Play? i don't know i'm, no. t- can, can <laughs> I'm shutting up i'm shutting or? up from now on <laughs> yeah. i'm done i'm done somebody else talk <laughs> really wow yeah. you're drinking a lot of coffee today there I, 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 there's no no caffeine. No, I'm just kidding. It's just all me. You're all we're pumped. We're yeah. excited. This is all. This is all such fun stuff. But yeah, this is um, this song. The the words of this song are literally word for word what happened. Um, it's it's about sitting down with the, the the record label with our manager and having them you know give us this lecture that they gave us over and over and over again about how they were just guiding us. They were just guiding us. And we had to be the source of the energy and so on. And um, and so we, we wrote this song about them. <laughs> Jokes so, on them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah, they weren't impressed. You would have thought they would have really liked a song written about them. Yeah, you would have thought so. You know, we're trying to find something they liked. <laughs> Usually, when you're with, out to dinner with people, if you talk about the other people, you've talked about the people you're with, they like that. Yeah. You know? So here's a song about you guys. You like that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's about you. Uh-huh. It's just about you. Not about me. Wait, it's about you. Scratch. Is this why they're like, no, not the album is too controversial? <laughs> we wrote a song about it. <laughs> right, right. That's probably it. It hit too close to home. <laughs> I think it did. <laughs> well, let's take a listen to it. This is the source. <laughs> Some fear I was too scared to reply. We have watched you work, oh boys, and a spark bell we can see. He says if you believe in yourself, everything else is just maturity. He said you are the source, the energy source. My job is but to guide. So get Good luck. 
I love that. That is the source. And you are tuned in to the Johnson Drake Migration Virtual Album Release Show. Hello. Joined of course Guy Drake, Tom Johnson, and Rusty Drake. <laughs> Hearing that song again. I just That's thought it about <laughs> I just remembered a really interesting story about that song, which is that you know, we had we had limitations with these tapes. We were talking about it, but this is one of only, I think two songs where we actually had two versions of the song. Maybe there was three, but we had, we had two versions of this one and there was one tape that sounded not very good. And then there was one tape that sounded really good. Like it was much better quality. I don't know why, but we had this second tape that only had some of the songs and it sounded much better. And I was like, let's use that one. (laughs) <laughs> that's going to be so much easier to use. It sounds great. Let's use it. And uh, we kind of, you know, polished it up pretty well. And then Guy and Tom listened to it and they came back. And I was so excited about it. I couldn't wait for them to hear it. And they came back and I'm like, oh, it sounds pretty good, but it's missing the high harmonies. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what do you, what do you mean? And I, they're like, the high harmonies. It's in the other version, but not this one. That This one has it. You have to use this one. So oh, I went dear. back and listened. I'm so and sorry. They were, they were right. The the one <laughs> with the the really good version of the ta- the really good tape was uh, was it only had vocal lead vocal tracks. The much poorer version had these beautiful harmonies. And then it was like, oh, you, you guys are right. And then, can we use the other one? And these guys were both like, no, no, uh-uh, sorry. No. So I think it was at least like six months more work or something like that. <laughs> but but it was worth it. That was, it, it was totally worth it. I'm really glad we used it because we made it work and we got the tapes back and it they were right about the harmonies. So I thought that was a really interesting, that's a fun story and from the production it standpoint. It is, definitely. Right. Definitely. Rusty's like, what are you guys talking about? (laughs) No, there's these high harmonies. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. (laughs) Well, before we get (laughs) before we get into you know the next track, we do have some photos that we're gonna throw up on screen and just kind of see what what do y'all remember? What's oh my goodness, what's happening in this photo? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. This is backstage um on the road. That's me on the left. Bill Berg in the center. Um uh our our drummer, that's Jimmy Johnson, um, sitting next to him. And then the guy on the far right is a member of we must have been touring at this point with a band uh uh, called Lobo, and um, and and he was the lead guitarist for Lobo. I think his name is Jr. Something, and he Jr. Cobb. I think. Wow, that's uh, good memory. Yeah, I think that's his name because uh, I I I I did a it. A, a, a Facebook stalking thing a while back. <laughs> well, I was trying to figure out. I saw some of these old pictures, and I was trying to remember who they were. But he ended up oh, becoming a, he ended up becoming a big deal. He started all those guys that played with Lobo started the Atlanta Rhythm Section. Yeah, I did. Know. And he wrote a whole bunch of their hit songs. Um, and they were they really had a great ride for about three or four or five years, you know, just launching one number one hit after another up there. So we've, so we've talked about uh, Jimmy Johnson and that stuff, but um, but Bill in the center there um, with his hands behind his back, Bill is also one of a uh, world-class animator. And um, at this particular time, both Bill, a- a- after this, Bill and, and, and Jimmy moved out to LA and we know what now has happened to them. They're, they're world famous, but Bill actually started working for Disney. And um, and there was a movie coming out called Beauty and the Beast, and Bill was actually head animator on the Beast. And if you look at Bill, and you look at the Beast in that movie, it's like he did himself. He did himself. <laughs> he actually just did himself. It was great. I love it. Yeah. Oh, he had a very successful career with Disney, and he's still drumming away. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Well, let's see another photo. Oh. Okay. There's Bill Berg on the left. Yeah. Again, the Beast on the left, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Jimmy Johnson on the right. And I think 
we're we're in we're downtown in some midwestern city and i i Dubuque. think that looks like decora or something Dubuque or something like that yeah yeah i, I thought it, it might have been um <laughs> These are so I, weird. I, was, I, I was thinking that it might have been mitchell south dakota yes um, yes you're probably right because we played a big show out there that everybody was in lobo and linda ronstadt earth wind and fire and i mean just it was just this huge show and i'm thinking that we might have been wandering around between it, it went on for a couple of days i think and we were probably just wandering around downtown <laughs> <laughs> trying to kill some time oh, well, there we are. oh my god we're still there oh, there we are okay so that yeah the guy i was talking about jr cobb that's him on the left um, and that's, I, I think that's Roy Yeager next to him. He was the drummer. Uh, that's the bass player for Lobo next, then me, then Jimmy, then, um, then Bill Berg. And it looks like we've just been to a record store, Jimmy and Bill. <laughs> Guess who like had the camera? They got albums with them. I think, I think Tom had the camera. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. No, it's cool. Great. Yeah. You get photo credit. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, you're going all the. You're just gonna go through these. It's amazing. Uh, okay, so that's that's guy and I on the road. We're on an airplane, obviously. And uh, <laughs> after Jim Croce, we would never take an airplane uh, if it was more than 400 mile radius. We just wouldn't do it. Um, so yeah, but uh, that's yeah, that's so weird. I remember this particular. I, I do remember this particular picture because we ended up in the Kansas City airport. And now who cares about this stuff? Why am I talking about this? God. I don't know. I have okay, no and, idea. Yeah, exactly. Okay, never mind. That's us. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, we're just going on and on. <laughs> it's, your, it's your album release show. You can do that. <laughs> but okay. this, this is, um, we lived on a farm in, in Minnetonka, which uh, that property is probably worth $5 million now. <laughs> yeah, an elevator and everything. Was, Five acres of land, just prime on a pond. Land, yeah, uh, uh, yeah on a on a, on a, a good sized pond in Minnetonka, and this uh, we had uh, we had a dog named Princess, and there's puppies in this picture, which you can't see. But this is where the band did all of our rehearsing, and um, people crashed there, and it was just a it was just fabulous, fabulous. Bernie lived there. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Bernie, Bernie was there. there. Yeah, Bernie lived there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it wasn't Merce Cunningham. It was uh, a dancer that no one would ever heard of. But I, my in my first marriage, I was married to a, a dancer, and uh, so I knew all the all the major dancers. We, we were in the Kansas City airport, and Murray Lewis is right there. And I, I just, I'm like, God, can I have your autograph? It's like this is so amazing. And I got a picture of Murray and me, and I took that one. And uh, it was like, and, and no one would even know what I'm talking about. I, he was probably freaked out that I actually knew who he was. Yeah, like, I don't think dancers are used to getting recognized. No, really. it's like, oh my God, you're amazing. You're Murray Lewis. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh, this, I hated this concert. This was, uh, <laughs> wasn't this um, Southern Minnesota? Yes. Was that, uh, what's that city? It's right on the Iowa border. Marshall. No. No, not Marshall. Oh, no. something. Like, anyway, it sits right, it's it's right on the on the Iowa border. Yeah, There's this was this was an outdoor this was an outdoor music festival. Yeah, um, and that that's actually us up on stage. If you zoom in, you can oh, you can wow. see, and it's it's this huge audience, and Tom's on a little spinet piano. Yeah, you and never I, knew what you were gonna get. And I'm sitting on a stool. Yeah. That was the story of our life. Yeah. You know, all we wanted was a little bit of a visual. Could you just get us even a six foot grand? You know, you know, it's like, no, it was always just some little tiny piano. Yeah, I anyway. didn't like that concert. Oh, oh. yeah. Autographs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that too. That's great. I love this. I love the, the drive thing. And then the, you got the, the, the Ellen there in the upper Where right. Where are corner. we? Yeah, right. okay. Uh, I, God, this is so weird. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. Okay, it's but yes, there's guys signing autographs. Guys, well, there's one of you signing autographs. Oh yes, you know, it's yeah, great. it's amazing. There, there it is. And I mean, come on. I, I actually, okay, again, I'm so sorry. I just can't. I, I every single <laughs> thing has a deep breath. 
Deeper. Okay. So this, I think that Roll was, in, back to the that was in Rochester, Minnesota. My father had never really seen us live, never seen us. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm his son. And I was like, you know, and he had a sister, Jesse. And uh, I was like, you guys should come down and, and see this thing. We're going to be finding this guy named Lobo. And it's going to be this thing. And, uh, and come down. So he actually came down. I was like, oh, my God. And uh, but you have to realize Lobo had like me and dog and a, a, me and me and you and a dog named Boo. And uh, I remember we were on the bus with God, with Lobo and guy says, well, what, what does it mean? I, 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 I love you too much to ever start liking you. Guy actually asked him, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, because that was one of his lyrics. It was like, what does that even mean? Anyway, it was like, but, you know, and, and so it's, it's, much, it's like 5,000 <laughs> screaming girls, 5,000 screaming girls. And I realized, okay, this is great. This is how my dad's going to see me with 5,000 screaming girls. And then, you know, afterwards you're signing autographs and the whole deal. But it was like, really, really? That's how my dad had to see me? Okay, well, there. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the next track, Great yes. Beauty. <laughs> Ooh, my favorite. This is my favorite song. This is the. This is it. Okay, I'll, I actually have a prepared on this one. Um, so there's, there's a couple of lines on this. And no, I have some homework. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited. So um, I love this line. Tom, you should have warned us. You really should have. Okay. Okay. Do you want me not to, to read your lyrics? Don't know what I just, just saying. Yes, Whatever please. you got in mind, go for it, man. There's a couple of things I love about this. I, I'm sure you quite agree. You equal me. I'm sure you quite agree. You equal me. I mean, that's such a wonderful way of looking at that. And then, um, you know, I'm not going to do that, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this song, th this song is about, it's actually just a like a perfect snapshot of what m my life or our life was at that moment. The first, the first verse was, was, is, is about being, you know, I'm a part of We the People's Nation, a citizen of the USA. And it's about, you know, cheering for the social legislation. It's back to this thing about equality. That was that line Tom said, cheering for equality. I'm sure you quite agree you equal me, you know. And then this, the second verse was about um, what Tom was talking about a moment ago, is that one of the really bizarre transitions that we went through was that we had – you know, Tom was mentioning, we hadn't done a whole lot of concerts and all of a sudden, bam, we're in front of 10,000 people or, you know, 7,000 people, 6,000 people. That's that when you're 21 years old, that's just not the easiest thing in the world to, to assim assimilate. You know, it just, it, it's just, it's pretty overwhelming. So that second verse, um, look at all the people at the concert. What the hell am I supposed to do? They're expecting me to be the expert. I'm so scared I'll miss a cue and ruin our debut and wreck reviews. You know, it's just about that stress of of just being out there. And then, of course, the opening act, nobody wants to hear the opening act, right? You know, it's like, so it, you're always trying so hard. And then the third verse is about just, just friendships, just being with your friends, inviting all your friends to dinner. The third, the third, the, the third verse is is the sexy verse. Fourth verse, I don't know what verse I'm on now, and then we kind of, and then we kind of, kind of wrap it up. And it's just, it's sort of like these. If you think of going through a person's life at that moment and just taking a snapshot of morning, noon, night, midnight, you know, what is actually happening? That's that's what what. Um, that's kind of what great great beauty is all about, and culminating with that, all of these things just comprise this this great beauty that we have of just being human. Beautiful, nicely said. How how did you come up with this? I mean, these are just amazing lyrics, and you were twenty one when you wrote all of this. Yeah, wow, <laughs> my voice is squeaking. <laughs> I'm I don't know how we, I don't know how they pulled it off either. I don't think I was capable of you know being that profound when I was 21. I started working on this project when I was like in my mid 30s or something. <laughs> Significantly older when they were than they were when they started working on this project. Oh my gosh! Just, wow, such a lyricist. Well, thank you. Yeah, shall we listen? Let's listen to the track. Great beauty. 
I'm a part of we the people's nation Citizen of the USA Cheering for the social legislation Cheering for equality I'm sure you quite agree Well, that's great beauty. Yeah. You are tuned in to the Johnson and Drake Migration album release show, joined of course with Tom Johnson, Guy Drake, and producer Rusty Drake. I'm Krista Wax. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello, hello again. <laughs> wow, how does it feel just listening to all this music again? You know, it, you've been through so much, it's been quite the journey to get here and just to have it out now. Yeah, this particular album especially, because uh, the others were 
kind of already on their way. But this one has never been released. Nobody's ever heard this stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it feels really, really great. It's just Sometimes the, the, the main result is just to have it out there. And now it is. It's out there. That's good. I think that, that we had, um, at least I had, you know, lost hope that this album would ever actually end up seeing the light of day. And I had, <clears throat> I had these really, really positive memories of it, especially like, for example, Great Beauty. And, um, and I literally, literally never heard the song after we recorded it and mixed it that back in 1975. I never heard it again until 2017 or 18 or whenever it was that we found these tapes. And, and um, for me, it's really, it's super emotional that, the, that, that it, it survived, you know, we, <laughs> ah, I can't believe that and we, and we pulled it out and Rusty saved it and somehow salvaged it. I mean, if you could have heard the amounts of scratches and clicks and pops and noise that were in this, this, this song after laying in a closet for, for four decades, you know, you wouldn't have believed that this is, this is what, what was happened. So I, I'm just so grateful that the people who like Johnson and Drake's music can finally hear this album because we, we put so much into it at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably that's my favorite one. That's a good way of putting my involvement. I always just wanted to hear these songs, you know, it is, they seem so worth it to make, to, uh, you know, to get out there the way Tom and Guy are saying. I saw Bernie's question. You know, it's funny, Bernie. It it kind of went that way, but kind of not. So uh, as far as outboard effects versus, like, you know, effects that you can get with digital programs, we mostly use digital programs, and we just did uh, – w- went through a lot of effort to make sure everything really sounded right. Like, we didn't want to just use any effect. We wanted to make sure that they sounded right. But – a lot of the decisions we, we made were very much based on things having to do with the old tapes. So take like the last song, Great Beauty, for example. It's got that great, you know, that orchestral part that Tom composed just in 2018 and that Holda and Ruth played um, at, at cello and, and violin and viola for. It sounds beautiful and it sounds like it's meant to be there. But the funny story is that the tape we had, it was... it. It, it had this one part in it that Tom just hated. It, the song sounded beautiful, but it had this one line of synthesizer that he'd laid down in like 1975, and it was a synth string part. So it was like a you know synth, it was synth strings, and it was playing this line, and it was kind of in the background, and it sounded kind of like. It was kind of cool. I kind of liked it, but it, you know, Tom was right. It had a little bit of a chintzy thing, and Tom was just like, "Ah, God, oh, God, I can't stand it." It was just like the artist, like really wishing that piece of his work wasn't there. So we're like, "Well, what are we gonna do? We can't take this out of here. We didn't have the type of tape. We didn't have contr- enough. We didn't have all the tracks. This was like we we could not remove that part. It was, it was in there. It was there was no way of getting it out. So it was either." live with the song or get rid of the song. And so, you know, Tom's like, you know, worried about it. And then we said, well, okay, so we can't get rid of it. Well, what if we just added to it? So instead of just one sin string, suddenly we've got a, a part. We turn it into a string quartet. And then, you know, Tom's like, okay, well, all right, all right. And he goes and he writes this part out. And the next thing we know, we've got cello parts, violin, viola, and we have... We have a Mill City String Quartet over to, to lay it down. So technically speaking, that that the orchestral <laughs> part is is strings recorded in 2018, as well as one synthesizer still in the track, and it's all yes. back in there. Um, and so, like, we just had to make it work. So, like, for Bernie, for your question, it was like, okay. I, what decisions had to be made? We had to make certain choices, and then just do our best to make it all sound right. True, exactly. <laughs> and I can't hear that string part, that that synth part anymore. Just good. <laughs> Very good. Mission Go accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> right. Well let's, well, let's talk about the artwork. Yes. Well, excellent question. Thing. Excellent question. Yeah. Stephen Ryberg. Oh. 
Stephen was an old friend of ours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stephen is an old friend of ours from um, from uh, the children's theater. Uh, the children's theater. Yeah, we all worked together at one point at the children's theater, and we did a concert many, many, many years ago. Oh gosh, it must have been about 1975 at the children's theater, and Stephen designed that uh, artwork as a poster. Uh, in those days, the Children's Theater did a lot of concerts, and they would um, they would they would commission posters for each concert. So then we um, uh, uh, we talked to Stephen and asked him if we could use it for an album cover, and he said yes. And um, and then we uh, Rusty developed the font uh, while he was on a trip to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, uh, I don't. I don't remember why it happened, but I, and in Ireland, but it happened in Ireland, right? Rusty? I, I was just there. I mean, that was where I was. We were trying to get this done. I, I had a few extra days. I had a hotel room that had enough room, so I walked to the store and got big pieces of tag board and blue paint, and just started painting letters. And I painted like I don't know a dozen M's and 20 J's and O after O after O after O. And then, uh, you know, just took photographs of the ones that worked <laughs> and turned those into, uh, into vectors and they became the font on the album. <laughs> so it's all hand drawn, actually hand painted. Oh, wow. That's really impressive. L looking at the, looking at the album, the artwork and stuff, I'm the, the last song of the album, um, which we're about to get to, um, is, uh, is migration the name of the album and um it, it and, and the geese right there is referred to um in the first song searching for some peace and i love that because it, it brings that all together and then i also love the fact that um the grand there's a grandfather piece in searching for some peace which we listened to earlier and when i wrote the uh the song that's, that we're about coming up called migration I thought it was too much like searching for some peace. You know, it's just like, oh, you know, this is like, you know, it's kind of really similar to searching for some peace. And Guy went, no, this is a good thing. It's a good thing. Let's just put the grandpa part kind of in there and use it this way. And um, and then it, it'll, it'll kind of bookend. So that can be the first one. This can be the last one. And they work kind of together. So it's I love that. And I, I love the fact also that the first two notes you hear in the album are the last two notes you hear in the album. So, um, yeah, and I love I love the geese. In that it just all brings it together and there's a there's a line in 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 uh migration that i love uh it's like, level i was like uh, what i mean we're also so young i love this song because we're so young you know i hope to witness the potential there in me fulfilled to some degree you know it's like now 46 years later it's like you know what maybe, maybe some of that potential was fulfilled to some degree yeah. Yeah, to some degree. <laughs> and 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 then you know my my destination is unknown. I'm flying blind, but I've decided to be searching all the time, overshadows what I find. And as a traveler, I'm a traveler, and I, for me, it's the journey. It's not about getting to the destination. It's about the action of traveling. <laughs> sure. I just really quickly want to say that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of songs in this project. There was the Carry It On album, which we released last month. There's a couple more coming up. There's this yes. all together. It's like, I don't know, 40 some odd songs. Five albums. This is number three. And out of all those songs in this entire project, this next song is the single song I'm personally most proud of. Um, very, very excited to hear it. This song was almost unsalvageable. It was the poorest quality the the tape was damaged we just didn't it was not even we only had one copy of it um that existed and it was a damaged tape like pretty heavily so it sounded really 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 bad to the point that we thought that we weren't even going to be able to use it at this at a certain at one point we were questioning if we could use it which was not good because it was the title track of the album so we were really, <laughs> really worried about it you know like, we were trying all these things we had you know uh jeff laid down some beautiful guitar for it we you know it was all working but the tape just still sounded bad and then we had uh rob osterlin uh, engineer who was helping us at terrarium studio he and i had to total brainstorm one day and like did this thing and uh we brought it to life and i remember that like when we finally got to the final 
like mix of this listening to it for the first time in my stereo it was just like overcome with like just like it was so powerful it was such a powerful moment for me to ha- to um to hear this song finished after everything that went into it you know so i just wanted to throw that out there and it's a beautiful song for all the reasons tom just mentioned let's listen to it migration It's so beautiful. Migration by Johnson and Drake. Joined here, Guy Drake, Tom Johnson, producer Rusty Drake, and Crystal Wax. Wow. Beautiful track. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where can people get the album now that it's out? <laughs> uh, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon Play iTunes. iTunes. Okay, keep going, 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 going. Everywhere, Almost everywhere, started. everywhere. That music sold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every online service. So all the streaming yeah. services. Oh, we we haven't d- fully decided if we're going to do a CD or an LP. At some point, we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. I very selfishly would love to see this and hear it on an LP. Would be curious what other people think. So that's a that's a great one. Do go to johnsonanddrake.com and we have a newsletter. So sign up for the newsletter and then also let us know um, via email what what other delivery systems you'd like our albums to be in. That'd be helpful. Right. Yeah, and honestly, the newsletter is the best way to stay in touch. It'd be awesome if all you guys just uh, uh, either in the email that was sent out earlier today, if you got it, or <coughs> on our website, sign up for that. It's just going to be the easiest way to stay in tune with what we're doing. Um, if you sign up for it, it's less likely to go to your spam, and then you'll be aware of you know releases coming up down the down the road and uh, everything else that we do. So if we do LPs, oh, Bart wants a cassette tape. Fair enough, yeah. Bart. We can get you one of those. That's Thank you, Bart. That yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Bart, Bart will get the only cassette tape. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. Don't go for cassette tape. There's always Bart. Yeah. Good for you, Bart. 
<laughs> oh. I don't know you, but good for you. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for being here and being part Absolutely. of this and doing just this yes. awesome virtual album release show. It's been great listening to everything. Thank you, Krista. Yeah. Everyone sign up for their mailing list, put in for a cassette request, <laughs> whatever you may need. Thank you. Listen guys. to Krista's show. Yes. Oh, yeah. Show on KFAI. Krista Wayne. Right. And- MSV Sound, KFAI, Tuesdays, midnight to 2 a.m. All shows are archived in case you're not up that late. <laughs> all yes. Right. Thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody. It was good to have yeah. you join have a great us. Night. Thanks for being here. Until next time. We loved sharing it with you. <laughs> I like that.